Where are heaven and hell? 82607. The question of where the dead go has been with us as long as there has been the concept of an afterlife. The discussion about where heaven and hell are located have been with us as long as there have been those concepts. In many mainstream Christian teachings, there are very distinct locales that boil down to a simple idea. Heaven is up, hell is down. The Thomas tradition has had a different way of identifying the locations. It is a simple concept if you look at the world through observing eyes. There are many reasons mainstream Christianity identified their teachings, locations of heaven and hell. There was the idea of dead people being underground. The Jewish tradition saw the place of the dead as being an underground waiting room of sorts. It was called Sheol. It was where the dead waited until Judgment Day. There was no suffering per se. This became the place where hell was. It was not with God, so it was hell. If you were with God, you must be in heaven. There were several instances of servants of God going directly to heaven. There was Moses and Elijah. They had to have assistance from angels to get to heaven. Since angels were seen as having wings, it followed they needed wings to get back to heaven. So heaven was up. Up was in the sky, unreachable. God had to send angels to collect you if you were to be able to get to heaven. This, of course, led to the proverbial Tower of Babel. To reach heaven, you needed to build a tower tall enough to get to heaven. They failed, of course, because it was not up to people to demand access to heaven. The other reason that hell was rele relegated to as being down, there was a story of the fall of the morning star, otherwise known as Lucifer or Satan. That there was a fall described heaven must be up, hell must be down. The Gospel of Thomas has verses that have been called cryptic by Trinitarian scholars. When the stories were told explaining where heaven and hell were located, they were in agreement with the verses 3 and 113. Here they are. I have highlighted the most pertinent sections. Reconciler Gospel of Thomas, verse 3. Jesus said, If your leaders say the kingdom is in the sky, then the birds of the air will get to heaven before you. If the leaders say heaven is in the sea, the fish will get to heaven before you. Instead, know that heaven is inside of you, and heaven is outside of you. If you, who truly are, if you who will step into the presence of the one, you will know that you are the children of the one. If you do not seek to find your true self, you live in the darkness, and you are part of the dark, and you aid the darkness of the world. Reconciler Gospel of Thomas, verse thir uh, 113. Jesus, Jesus' students asked, When will heaven come? And Jesus said, It will not come by waiting for it. It will not be a matter of saying it is here or there it is. Heaven and the one are already spread upon the earth, and people do not see it. They fill the same spaces. The Church of Thomas Thomas teaches that the earth, heaven, and hell are occupying the same space. We have gone to the place allocated for heaven. We see a beautiful world filled with wonder. We see a floating globe of blue. We have also tunneled to great depths into the crust of the earth. Our ob observations and seismic tests have been able to identify the makeup of the unseen portions of our world. There is no hollow place to put hell. In the teachings of Jesus in the Church of Thomas, there is no up or down distinction. Heaven and hell are both here. Because all are occupying the same space, it is possible for heaven and hell to be in the same location as you are. Therefore, heaven and hell can be inside of you. With the advent of space travel, astronomy, modern science, and observation, we now know that the mainstream Christian idea of locations 
of heaven and hell have been in error. Despite this, many still cling to the ideas. It is a pity that some people would rather fight their intellect than admit that there are problems with the teachings. I have heard the statement that we never really went into space. It has been explained as a big hoax as to disprove the Bible. I guess they never talked with any of the devout Christian astronauts that have found great affirmations in their visits to space. With modern knowledge, we have not located either heaven or hell. The teachings of Jesus are upheld in the Gospel of Thomas. What we have been able to experience and observe has not conflicted with these teachings. It may not be the conclusion of our search, but there is a theory being discussed now that seems to have many components in common with these and other verses in the Gospel of Thomas. I asked a friend who was a mathematician about the verses, and I thought he was the one to check because what I was seeing was a mathematical way of explaining the inconsistencies in physics of the universe. He told me that there was a very strange uh, and it was written 2,000 years ago. He told them that I thought what I thought it looked like, and he told me that it did fit the theory in a very simple form. The theory is called string theory. There are many facets to it, to it which I will attempt to explain in a different sermon. The part that struck me was the idea of di separate dimensions. In modern physics, there is a problem. There are rules that apply to big things. There are rules that work very well until you get down to the atomic size of things. There are a set of rules that work very well in explaining workings of subatomic things. However, these rules do not work with anything bigger. The two sets of rules work very well until they approach each other's size categories. They cannot be reconciled with each other. It is one of the many reasons I named my update of the Gospel of Thomas, Reconciler Gospel of Thomas. String theory is able to reconcile and explain why these rules do not meet. It does this by allowing for the unseen and is yet untestable. It allows for the different dimensions occupying the same space at the same time. When I saw the documentary about string theory, I was thinking about heaven and hell. I had just gotten several translations of the Gospel of Thomas. As I read the verses, it struck me that they were also talking about string theory. What Jesus told Thomas may have seemed cryptic, but that was just the way it was a, a way ahead of its time. In the Church of Thomas, we do not write things in stone. We expect explanations from God's inspiration. We know it will arrive when we are able to grasp them. String theory may be a stepping stone to something else. We do see it as a pointer, possibly. God bless the whole world. No exceptions. Angel Eliza.